So let us start. Mushroom cultivation for beginners. I will be discussing only a few mushrooms because this is a very big topic and almost 20 to 25 different types of mushrooms are uh, we are able to cultivate and all the mushrooms will not be possible within one hour. So few mushrooms I will start uh, speaking about. Next slide. Now the question arises, what are mushrooms? Most of the mycologists, they know that mushrooms are fungi. Earlier, there were only two kingdom, planty and animal, but uh, the fungi have been included into a separate group, kingdom fungi. So mushrooms are eukaryotic microorganisms. Some fungi are microscopic and some uh, fungi are very big, which we can say easily with our naked eyes. And these big mushrooms, they, they call, we call them as a macrofungi or mushrooms. Earlier, there were two words, mushrooms and toadstools. Mushrooms were only, this term mushroom was only used for edible mushrooms and toadstools. Toad means death. In Latin word, toad means death and stool means weapon. So poisonous mushrooms were, were called as toadstools. But now we call all the mushrooms, whether it is edible or poisonous, only single word, mushrooms. So this is about, you may know, know that what is uh, mushrooms and toadstools. So we are talking about the mushrooms. So the, as you know, the fungi have cell wall like plants. But what is the difference that in the fungi, the cell wall is composed of chitin and they're heterotypic in nature. Plants are autotropic or they can synthesize their own food. Next one. So on the basis of their edibility or their uh, nutritional property, we can define there are three basic groups. Mushrooms are edible. Just like Agaricus bisporus. We call this as button mushrooms. Another pleurotus, this is known as oyster mushrooms, and Volvarilla padista mushrooms. There are so many mushrooms, Strophoria, auricularia, lantinus. They are all edible mushrooms. Then there are toxic mushrooms. Just like emanate of haloides, if a person 10 to 25 grams of this poisonous mushroom, if he consumes, he will go to death. Gyromitra, several species of Cortinera, Enocybe, they are toxic mushrooms or poisonous mushrooms. And there are a third group of mushrooms which are having medicinal properties, just like as a Ganoderma lucidum, which we call as a Rishi mushroom, Cordyceps. This is the insect mushroom or we call it Kida Ghan, it is having a, a lot of medicinal pr properties and people are uh, growing this mushroom artificially and this mushroom grow on the insect. But because of this medicinal property, two species Cordyce Cordyceps militaries is largely grown in so many places or in its laboratories. And another mushroom, Lentanula edodus, it is edible also as well as it is having medicinal properties. I had named only three. But in Chinese literature, almost 100 mushrooms are being used for making medicines. You can have different types of medicines from, from different mushrooms. Next one. So now question arises, why we should grow mushrooms? As you know, the mushrooms are healthy food. They are having protein. They are having low sodium and high potassium content. And they are having vitamin D. For vegetarian people, vitamin D deficiency is very common. And there were so many articles in newspaper that in India, 80 to 85 up to 90 percent people are having vitamin D deficiency. So mushroom is a very good source of vitamin D. As I mentioned you, mushrooms are having medicinal value, anti-tumor, antioxidant, anti-dementia, immunomodulatory, anti-cancer, anti-AIDS, anti-hepatitis. So many properties are having uh, from mushrooms. Similarly, low cost inputs. For mushroom going, we need very low cost in inputs. Just like for substrate, we are using any kind of agriculture or crop waste. I will go into detail in the next uh, slides. Then mushrooms can be cultivated in non-cultivable land. Some people have this notion that mushrooms are grown in open or in the field. So they ask sometimes ask to us that I'm having 20 acres of land or 30 acres of land. But mushrooms are grown indoor because they know they require very high humidity 
uh, conditions. So that's why we are growing them in a uh, growing houses. And these growing houses or cropping rooms can be uh, prepared on non-cultivable land and be util utilized vertical space. If suppose that is a room of height of 12 feet or 13 feet, five to six tires of uh, rows we can uh, grow this mushroom so vertical space we are uh, using just like in the hydroponics in the hydroponics also we are uh, growing vertical space so in mushrooms also we are using vertical space not so that in limited space a farmer or a family can have its own uh, um, uh, income and he can generate his money then mushrooms are environment friendly organic food we need minimum pesticide and uh, 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 fungicide and because they are grown indoor so you can control any kind of insect and paste then wealth from the waste i will come into the detail there the how much agri agriculture waste we are generating and from this waste how much uh, protein or we can generate or food we can generate then employment generation nowadays the people they ask that we need employment so mushroom is a very good source of employment generation also and spent mushroom substrate as you know once mycelium colonized the substrate they primarily because of their extracellular enzymes like is lignin oxidation peroxidase like is lignin peroxide magnesium peroxide they degrade cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and once this uh, amylase cellulose, cellulose are degraded then secondary organism bacteria they can grow on the any kind of agricultural agricultural waste and the decomposition is very fast next one so with increase in population we are need in need of more and more cereal crops pulses grains and vegetables and india is also producing a la large quantity of horticultural crops so these crops create a lot of waste also and these waste are to be recycled otherwise our whole earth will be full of organic matter so mushroom can be helped in recycling this waste otherwise there will be problems of forest fire harmful microbial uh, multiplication on this waste and they may cause asthma or several types of our lungs problem and they create obnoxious smells also and shortage of place for the discarded material just like at the tea industry i remember when we started our career in 1983-84 in a, a solon near shimla a lot of apple was used for extracting juice and apple pomace that was just thrown near Parvanu and it, when we, whenever we used to pass from Kalka to Solon or Shimla a lot of smell used to create and because of that smell we were having a lot of problem so this type of waste from apple industry similarly if you go to northeast in Assam a lot of this tea industry waste because for tea industry they are taking away the leaves and stain on petrol and all this part. They are the waste. So the people are burning and this is creating a problem. So this type of waste, similarly coffee industry, tobacco industry and several fruit uh, industry waste can be utilized for mushroom growing. Similarly, cotton industry. There was one scientist from uh, South and he brought some uh, coconut waste in sources of paddy cell and all these things. He told me that whether we can uh, grow this mushroom for this and we have utilized this type of waste also that I will come in the later on in the slides. Next one. Now, mushroom for suitable, sustainable practices, we need... Just give me a second, a second sir, please. Yeah. So mushroom, mushroom farming or mushroom cultivation is carbon neutral. Nowadays, we talk about carbon neutral or zero emission. So mushroom cultivation recycle huge agro waste and it is having a nutritious food and we can produce protein per in very less time protein per unit space time as from mushroom farming. Next. 
Now, because for this is a group of beginners, I will show you different parts of a typical mushroom. There are different groups of mushroom. So this is a typical mushroom. You can see this is a cap. This is a cap, or we call it a pileus. In scientific term, we call it a pileus or cap. Then mushroom spores are produced on gills. These are the gills. On these gills or lamellae, the spores are produced. Then this is the stem. This is a stipe portion, or, or we call it a stem. Then in some of the mushrooms, there is a ring-like structure is present, which we call as annulus or ring. This is a common in Strophelia, Agaricus, and so many genus, a, a ring is present. And then in some the genus, just like as Amanita and Bolvarilla, there is a cup-like structure. You can see here, this is a cup-like structure, and this is a volva. We call it a volva or cup. This is the identification of this, this genera. Next one. So now, as you know, that mushrooms, they belong to either ascomycete or basidiomycete. Most of the prized mushrooms, they are from ascomycete. This, this mushroom, this is a morsella or a moral mushroom, we know as cultivation of this mushroom is so far not possible in the laboratory. But in some places in China and Europe, some people are growing this mushroom under some conditions. They have the very specific condition. This mushroom is very costly mushroom and 10 to 12,000 rupees per kg it is being sold. This is another halvela mushroom. This is also an ascomycete. And this mushroom produces halvelic acid. Uh, people say this is not a good edible mushroom, but some tribal people I have seen in uh, Himachal Pradesh in Uttarakhand, the people, they boil this mushroom and they discard the boiled water. So halvelic acid is removed from boiling and then they consume this mushroom. This is also another ascomycete, cup fungi or aluria. Next one. Now we'll come to basidiomycete. What is the difference that in ascomycete, the SI and ascospores are produced? And this is a basidiomycete, typical basidiomycete. Here, the spores are produced on basidia. So these are different groups. This, uh, uh, as you know, the mushrooms not only grow on decomposed organic matter, even dung fungi. You can see this mushroom is, grown on, is growing on a dung. This is an amanita mushroom. And this mushroom, this pleurotus or oyster mushroom, you can see this is growing, growing on a tree or wooden trees. Next one. Yeah. Here, this mushroom, they don't have basidia. They are known as spine fungi. You can see these are spine-like structure. So this hymenium or basidia, basidia spore producing structure is spine-like. You can see here, this is a hericium corallodid. It is just like as a coral shape. So here you can see this is coral shape. And this is albatrellus. These are also uh, spine fungi. Next one. This is polypores. We can't call this, this bracket fungi also. So you can find this mushroom on trees. You can see that this mushroom is growing on a wooden tree. So these are perilene mushrooms. Sometimes you can see year after after year, this mushroom growing on tree. And I, I, I am in Ahmedabad, and I also go in a wander, wander here and there. And I see that when there is a rain, these mushrooms start coming up. And after the rains, they will become dormant. And again, in the next season, they start growing. You can see here, this hymenium is a pore-like structure. These are small pores. This, that's why it is not polyporeals. That means pore, the multiple or so many numerous pores. That, that's why they are known as polyporeals. Next one. So mushrooms are not only above the soil. There are some mushrooms under the soil also. So these are gastromycete mushroom. This is earth star or astritus. This mushroom is on the, it is a cup like this small butter like structure in the soil. But when it matures, it comes above the soil. This is scleroderma and these are polypores. So these are gastromycete that are under the soil. Next one. And this is jelly fungi. You can see in the uh, wooden trees, it's just, just jelly-like structure. Whenever there are rains, it will absorb the moisture and you can find this mushroom. But after the rains, after one or two days, it will usually think that this is a bath. 
but these are the jelly fungi they are known as tremella and auriculolium <coughs> next one so these are you can see that these are coral fungi their shape is just like as a coral you will think that these are grasses but they are not grasses they are claveria and remeria this claveria has less branches and remeria has multiple branches next one and this is a very interesting mushroom this uh, a mushroom i have found only in the uh, temperate uh, himalayas and the uttarakhand and this is known as cauliflower mushroom you will think that this is just a very big cauliflower this under pine tree you can see this pine needle also and this is one of the most tasty mushroom i have ever tasted next one so now they my intention was that at least you should know how many types of what are the basic types of mushroom in the nature now you come to actual mush mushroom cultivation process so in mushroom cultivation process you need three things first thing mushroom seed or spawn second thing growing houses as i mentioned you that mushrooms are not grown in open field they are, uh, they are grown in different types of growing houses and substrate for growing this substrate can be fresh always composted because some mushrooms they can be uh, grown directly in the fresh substrate but some mushrooms they require composted sub substrate uh, for growing next one so now mushroom seed you may think that like all other uh, vegetable crops cereal crops there are seeds so in mushrooms also what are the spores the seeds the spores are the seed but spores we cannot use for growing mushroom why because the spores are so minute and they are heterothelic in nature if you mix suppose i give you one gram one million or ten million of spores and i ask you to mix in one ton of compost you cannot mix it it will not be a homogeneous mixture and moreover it is heterogeneous in nature in some uh, until less two heterothelic uh, this mycelium they don't uh, mad that will not for fruiting bodies it will be only sterile structure so you can see in mushroom seed production there are three things first to get mushroom culture so you can see this is a mushroom culture this is a fresh fruit from any authentic authentic source any agriculture department universities or director of mushroom research you can get the culture and this culture can be under aseptic condition under laminar flow you can prepare this culture media this culture media what is culture media this is the food for this growing my mycelium a little bit of tissue from here you can transfer in a fresh tube and after 10 days you will have this type of growth that means your culture is prepared the second thing is substrate preparation for seed so we normally wheat grain the people are using but other grains like jowar badra maize and even if you go to northeast west bengal and odisha the people are using paddy and even rice also as a carrier material for this mycelium so this the whatever this carrier material maybe jowar badra maize wheat grain you just boil and when it is a little bit soft then you drain out the excess water you mix gypsum and calcium carbonate and then fill in this this type of polypropylene bag you insert a, 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 a plastic ring and plug with the help of non-absorbent cotton then you autoclave or sterilize at 22 pound pressure for two hours and when then it is completely sterilized little bit of tissue under aseptic condition under laminar flow you transfer here and you can see this whitish growth so this wheat grain are not the seed these are only the carrier material for this mycelium and after 15 to 20 days you will see that all the grains are colonized by the whitish growth that means your spawn is prepared next one yeah the second thing is growing houses this is a low cost mushroom growing house you can see small bricks we have prepared these are doors windows because mushroom require 
fresh oxygen, the oxygen concentration should be not more than 600 to 800 ppm. So, su sufficient ventilation is required. So, these are two do the windows this side, then in front or in the back also. These are the uh, windows and then two doors. And all the doors and windows, they should be covered with the help of uh, this uh, nylon uh, this wire mesh so that insects, they don't penetrate inside your cropping room. See this, this type of growing house, about 40 feet to 20 feet, hardly 50,000 or 60,000 rupees you can prepare. And the top surface, you can see here, here what we have done, uh, nylon sheet, this thick plastic sheet is put and then on that we have covered with the help, help of pedestra bundle and again another plastic sheet and it has been tied with the nylon sheet so that this pedestra they doesn't uh, blow away with the winds. Next one. So this is the poor man's mushroom house. You can have this type of mushroom houses also here. Here there are, there are cooling ducts. These are ventilation for fresh air and on the opposite side there are cooling pads. So you can control the temperature also and uh, for moisture also, you can see here this pipe, from, from this pipe, you can spray the water. This type of mushroom house will cost about 1 lakh to 1 lakh 50 thousand rupees. Next one. For amateur or suppose anybody is having little bit of space, this type of small uh, mushroom house you can uh, have in your house and 10, 20, 30 bags you can keep. Even in Amazon also, I have seen that this type of growing houses or green houses, they are available and do, you can use for this mushroom, for this houses also for growing mushrooms. Next one. Then these are ultra modern high tech mushroom houses. As you know, the button mushroom, this is a temperate mushroom. I will come uh, later on that. They, this mushroom requires less than 20 degrees centigrade. So it requires sufficient uh, insulation, ventilation. You can see these are the uh, this air ducts. Uh, and you can see how many multiple tires. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that, six to seven or even 10 or 12 tires, depending upon the height, you can have different tires. So vertically, you can go any height. Next one. This type of growing houses, they are very costly and for that you need, you require cooling uh, um, machine and cooling material also and they are very costly and the one mushroom unit will cost about 80 lakhs to 1 crore or 1.5 crore. So these are another control climate uh, control growing room where this oyster mushroom, so in some mushrooms they are growing on this uh, plastic bottles. Flamulina, a king oyster mushroom in China. They are growing on this type of plastic bottle and this mushroom, they require less temperature. So these are temperature controlled growing rooms. Next one. So now we will come to actually different types of mushroom on the basis of their temp temperature requirement. We can classify temperate mushroom. Which mushrooms less than 20 to 22 degrees Celsius? First is Agaricus bisporus or commonly called white butter mushroom. Another is Flamulina, valuti mushroom. We call it winter mushroom or Inokitake also. And nowadays people are growing a lot of this mushroom, this Flamulina. And I have seen in Bombay, this mushroom bar in one departmental store, it was sold as 2000 rupees a kg. You can see how much energy and this is big, uh, this malls and big houses, they are procuring from Korea and Japan and these other places, Vietnam. So we have got the technology and in our condition, in our Indian condition, we can grow this mushroom and the cost will never come more than 100 rupees. And you can see how much big margin is having this mushroom. There was one, uh, four or five years before, there was one uh, demand from the Bombay, somebody was interested to grow this mushroom, but I don't know what happens later on. Similarly, third is Lentilina edodis mushroom. This is also known as shiitake mushroom or Japanese mushroom. 
in, in Japan, this mushroom is very popular because of this is having medicinal property, anti-cancer property. And the shiitake, this is a common name. She, this is a kind of oak tree. Take means tree. This mushroom is found growing on oak tree. That's why it is known as shiitake mushroom. Another, this fourth mushroom is pleurotus, oyster mushroom. Oyster mushroom is very interesting genus. There are almost 35 to 40. There are no till date any compiled information how many different types of species of the oyster mushroom. But on the basis of temperature uh, conditions, we have found that in pleurotus species, pleurotus osteatus, pleurotus florida, and pleurotus erangii, this or this pleurotus erangii, it is also known as king oyster mushroom. And this mushroom also requires less than 22 degrees centigrade. If the temperature is 20 to 25 degrees, you may ask me question, sir, if the temperature is more than 20 or 25 degrees centigrade, you will get vegetative growth of mycelium. But the reproductive structure in mushrooms, there are two CGs. Vegetative structure, that is fungal mycelium growing on the substrate. And the fruiting body, they are the reproductive structure. This reproductive structure only form during the fruiting stage when the temperature is favorable for fruiting. This fruiting enzymes will induce fructification. If the temperature is high, they will never form any fruit bodies. Next one. So subtropical mushroom. This pleurotus mushroom, this is a, a there are some species, pleurotus sadar kaju, pleurotus citrinary pleurotus, pleurotus cornucopia. Uh, these are subtropical mushrooms. They grow less than 30 degrees centigrade. And then auricularia or wood ear mushroom. I will come briefly about all this mushroom, uh, how to grow this mushroom. Because in one hour, we cannot finish, finish all the mushroom. But at least I can give you a little bit information that what is the scope of mushroom cultivation for uh, in India? Then the tropical mushroom. As you know, our 80% of our uh, India is mostly tropical mushroom. So, Bolvaria bolisia is a Padisha mushroom. This mushroom is very popular in Odisha. If you happen to go to Bhubaneswar, Katak, or Jagannathpuri in the early morning by 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, you can see on the roadside people selling this mushroom, 200 gram bags, and this mushroom is being sold in Odisha, 150 to 200 rupees per kg. Another mushroom, Calosabe indica. Indica, that name indicates this is our Indian culture. It is also known as milky mushroom. Because of this color of this mushroom, it is milky white. That's why. We, know, we call it a milky mushroom. One, these people, these tribal people from West Bengal, they used to sell this mushroom in Kolkata. And one of our late professor, uh, Purkaista, scientist, he found this mushroom to market. He brought this mushroom in the laboratory. He cultured it and he tried to cultivate and he gave the name Calosibe indica. So this is a also very good mushroom suitable for our Indian condition. Then there is a Ganodara Gadarma lucidum. This is not a edible mushroom, but this is medicinal mushroom. We call it Rishi mushroom also. And this mushroom also requires more than 35 to 40 degrees centigrade. And some people are growing this mushroom. One of our mushroom farmer in Gujarat, Surat, he's growing this mushroom and selling this mushroom. And one another person from Panchkula, uh, Mohali, a uh, Panchkula, he is also growing this mushroom and selling this tablet and powder. Another very interesting mushroom, Macrosybe gigantea. This mushroom I have found from South Rajasthan. I collected this mushroom and in the year 2002 and I tried to grow this mushroom. And this is also a very good mushroom and it has the temperature range from 25 to 35 degrees centigrade. It The cultivation technology of this macrocyba, macrocybe is similar to calocybe indica. So what is this difference? That some people, they don't like the smell of calocybe indica. It is having little bit pungent smell. So some people, they, they don't eat this mushroom, but this macrocybe, it is not having 
that pungent smell and both this mushroom calocybe and macrocybe what is the advantage not only there a temperature requirement for growth but their keeping quality as you know in india the people live in the villages and in villages power failure or sometimes the, 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 the you don't have the refrigeration facilities or uh, refrigerators are not available so up to four to five days you can keep this mushroom in your houses at 25 degrees centigrade or up to 30 degrees centigrade there will be little bit dry your shrinkage but they will not be spoiled so this both this mushroom has the advantage that they are having very good keeping quality and this this macrocybe it is having a very high vitamin d content then another one mushroom agaricus bitorcus this is summer white button mushroom summer white button mushroom that means this is a white button mushroom but it grows more than 30 to 35 degrees centigrade that's why we call it summer white button mushroom next one so now well, we have to hurry because only 20 minutes are left agriculture residue, residue what is the status of agriculture residues you can see field crop 679 million ton crop residues from horticulture crop, cabbage cauliflower so many other vegetables a lot of waste that generated and uh, um, this agro residues it, it comes at about 947,000 million tons and this roadside forestry in big cities you will see a lot of this uh, wooden trees they are fall and this this uh, and in the forest also 204 million tons of this wooden uh, material as a waste is also available so you can see 1151 million tons of forest this agro waste is available and even 0.1 million ton 0.1 percent if we utilize that means only 1 million ton so india can produce a big big market for mushroom and we can export and create a lot of employment generation and protein deficiency will be overcome next one so what are the different agro residues wheat and pagista cotton starts and leaves pulses starts and leaves there are several pulses like this are her and all the, they are very hardy structure so no animal can be feed and they don't have any other use similarly the oil seeds so i've been mustard sunflower their leaf and stem portion that can be also used tree leaves i have used several kind of tree leaves people leaves apple leaves and, and even this poplar this poplar tree you need know that this is a in the this uh, hills just like in the people this uh, ficus uh, religiosa in the plain in the hills poplar trees are grown just like in uttarakhand jammu kashmir and himachal pradesh the leaves of this poplar they can be also grow for the mushroom cotton waste rackets influences i will show you side similarly flower waste we have a lot of temples and a lot of flower waste is generated and that flower waste uh, can be used for growing mushroom banana waste jowar maize and bajra so these are the best next one so these are the different industrial ways jute mentha tea leaf industry paper industry tobacco industry coffee industry sugar bake sugar cane trashes the farmers when they bring the sugar cane to the factories they remove the leaf and upper portion and these trashes are sometimes lying in the field so these trashes can be used for grow growing mushroom coconut industry timber industry rice husk banana waste, oil industry waste, and fruit industry waste, and even mintha. There was one farmer in Uttar, uh, this Uttar Pradesh. Mintha is cultivated in uh, Kannauj and so many areas. And he brought almost 20, 25 kg of mintha waste. It was completely black colored. And he, uh, he gave me that sample and asked me, sir, can we use this mintha waste for growing the mushroom? I told, I will try, and I will show you the slide. Next one. So this is white button mushroom. Next one. In white button mushroom, there are commonly three species cultivated. Agaricus bisporus. In Agaricus bisporus, there are two stains, white stain. There are some stain, their cap or step pileus is white color. And there are brown stain also. The cap is brown color. The what is the advantage? In brown stain, they are having more aroma. And uh, they are having very 
high dry matter. That's what these people like. Their brown stain, the temperature requirement is less than 20, 25 degrees a day. Then agricultural biotrophs, I have mentioned you, this grows 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. It is a virus resistance in Holland and some European countries. There was an X disease from button mushroom and completely there was devastation of agaricus biosporus and the people tried to grow this bitorcus and it is having resistance to virus and you can grow this mushroom during high temperature when the temperature 25 to 30 degrees centigrade and another third species agaricus blazy agaricus blazy or basilensis the temperature requirement 28 to 30 degrees centigrade this mushroom is having a medicinal property and so many uh, countries or people they are growing this mushroom there are some other species also agaricus silvilla agaricus agaster but that production is not very high so that's why i have not mentioned next one so for this button mushroom as i have mentioned you some mushroom they require composted material composted mundane that means that is this aerobic fermentation solid state fermentation this agaricus Mycel this mycelium that cannot utilize directly the agro waste. They don't have extracellular enzymes to degrade cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. That's why we are making a compost. So there are different so many compo compost formula, but I will only mention a popular formula. Virsa 300 kg can calcium ammonium nitrate 9 kg, muriate of potash 3 kg, superphosphate. 3 kg, wheat bran 15 kg, and gypsum 20 kg. In composting, there are three methods long method, short, short method, and indoor composting. Long method is very easy method. Anybody can grow, use that method, and I will be discussing only this long method. Here, all this material, ingredient, this tries uh, soaked in water, then all the ingredients are mixed. And it is made a pile, 1.5 meter high and about 4 to 5 feet broad. Lengthwise, you can go up to any size. And then this pile is turned after 6 days, 10 days, 13 days. So that this is aerobic fermentation. If you don't uh, do any turning, then there will be anaerobic condition. That's why the pile is made broken. And again, fresh pile is prepared. So each and every part of substrate is getting oxygen. That's why it is known as aerobic fermentation. And after eight to nine pile, after 28 days, you will see that there's a brownish color compost is prepared. How you can judge the compost? There will be no smell of ammonia. And the second thing, there should if you press that compost between in your palm, no water should Ooze out from your finger. If that is the condition, that means your compost is prepared. Otherwise, if there is a, a little bit of ammonia or water is remaining, one or two turning, you can also give. Just on the day of one day before, when your com compost is prepared, you spread this compost uh, on the platform, and then when the temperature 20 to 35 degrees, 25 degrees centigrade, you mix span. That is known as spawning. Span is added at the rate of 0.5 to 1%. Even some people, if you want a rear crop, you don't have much time. If you mix more spawn, this colonization of mycelium will be fast. Normally, if you take, take only 0.5%, it will take 15 to 20 days for mycelium colonization to compost. But if you use higher compost rate, then it will take less time for colonization on the compost. Next one. <laughs> you can see how this prepare, these people are preparing compost. You can, this is the compost uh, batting and all the ingredients are mixed and they are mixing. And after that, next one, they will raise pile. You can see these are the compost pile. Height is about five, five feet and breadth is also fine. Lengthwise, you can go any side. For making this compost pile, you need this uh, iron uh, planks. You can have this board, iron board, one, two, three, and here you can fill. And you can see here this thermophilic mycnosum. This is aerobic fermentation, and the temperature of your compost will go rise from 60 to 70 degrees centigrade. And you can see there's a steam, this 
is coming from this compost pile. Next one. So yeah, you can see how this compost pile is prepared, and this pasturation method. This is a tunnel. This tunnel after 10, 12 days, they are filled inside this tunnel. Then here, this it is closed, and with the help of steam boiler, you increase the temperature 60, 64 degrees centigrade, and after that, you could, mm, conditioning and at uh, 10 days, this compost will be prepared. This is a pasturation method, and there is one indoor method also but that requires a lot of money and expertise next one you can see this is haryana this indigenous mushroom house the haryana people are very intelligent and they have developed at their own method they are preparing in open field this type of mushroom houses they use this bamboo and in on this bamboo they, they are raising the structure and they will cover with the help of polyethylene sheet and a uh, padista bundle and this uh, unit mushroom unit will be growing house will be ready you can see they are making their compost pile in the open field here also you can see this is a steam is the little bit of high temperature coming at the steam you can see whitish steam these are the finished this uh, growing house <laughs> next one sorry <clears throat> after when the compost is prepared you mix seed you can see this white type of this grain these are the uh, seed is mixed in compost then they are filled in the polythene bags next one sorry yeah these are the i think these slides are a little bit next one this is a brown stain you might have a, an interest that how this brown stain looks. So this is a brown stain. This is a brownish color. That's why it is known as brown stain. Next one. This cultivation of both the, the species stains is similar. This high tech mushroom house. You can see this white button mushroom. Next one. Yeah, this is a high tech mushroom. Temperature, aeration, humidity. Everything is controlled. These, these are the for fresh air and all the air all this thing next one you can have this type of st structure also in small rooms in polythene beds you can grow mushrooms next one so yeah after spawning you keep this bag this in this bag compost plus pan is added and they are closed and now they will be kept in cropping rooms next one next one yeah in the cropping rooms what will happen this after 15 to 20 days, there will be complete whitish growth of mycelium on the compost that means your compost is ready for next phase that is next phase is casing casing means you are applying a little bit uh, casing material and this casing material is prepared people have different types of formulation some people use uh, old uh, coir pit and old farmer method to two year old applied with and sterilized with the help of two percent farming solution and some people mix gypsum and calcium carbonate in casing soil and this casing soil about two to two point five centimeter is applied i will show you the next slide yeah here you can see this casing soil is preparing next one yeah this is the mycelium has been completely colonized here on this compost and now you see they are applying this casing soil about two to three centimeter next one here in the, this cropping room the bags are kept after uh, the casing now we will start giving daily aeration and then uh, irrigating water spraying water so that after seven days you will get small pinhead and mushrooms next one now we'll come to another mushroom this is shiitake mushroom people also call a japanese mushroom and it is one of the largest cultivated mushroom in the world the this proportion of this mushroom is about 26 percent of total cultivated mushroom it is having medicinal property like anti-cancer it is gaining popularity in india also and people in Manipur, Nagaland, they are growing and some other parts of because of now awareness of this multimedia, 
so many other people are growing also this mushroom so you can see what is the shape of this mushroom you can see this is a this shiitake mushroom or lentiluna edibilis or japanese mushroom next one so what is the basic substrate here there are different for 10 20 so many formulas available i will be mentioning only two formula mori et al has given sadas 20% rice bran 20% and water content is adjusted to 65% water and content plays a very vital role if the water content is very high sorry <coughs> the water content could be about 65% this royce is also develop one other method here he is mixing sardas maple and bunch 60 40 millet instead of 20% rice bran he is mixing millet and wheat bran 10% 10% and water contents 20% all these ingredients are mixed and they are filled in polypropylene bags that's one and then this polypropylene bags are sterilized in an autoclave and after when the uh, after sterilization you mix this is span and spanning is done 2 kg of composted sardas or sard star about 25 to 30 kg a gram of span is sufficient for 2 kg of the sardas only 25 to 30 gram span you can add and if you are having your own span firstly you can add extra span also that will help in by, by getting more production and earlier and faster production next one here incubation now after incubating in the dark after at 20 25 as i mentioned you most of the mushroom for incubation they require 20 to 25 degree centigrade for vegetative mycelium except calocybe ganoderma and agarico bitorca bite, they require little bit higher temperature for mycelial growth for vegetative stage they require 30 or 35 or 40 degree centigrade once this mycelium colonizes then you will see little bit of bumps on the substrate brownish color little bit bumps on uh, elongation on the bag that means now your bags are ready then you give chilling or cooling shock treatment and after giving shock treatment uh, you have to open the bag and you can uh, you have to maintain relative humidity 70 to 70 80% and after 15 days of slitting the bag you will get mushroom fruit bodies next one you can see how beautifully this mushrooms are coming from single single bag next one another very interesting low temperature mushroom is i think i will hurriedly go this is a flamulina or inokitake mushroom this is also very i, I have mentioned you that in bombay the people are uh, liking this mushroom and white in from india different parts of india i have collected six strain one from mizoram a three four strain from uh, uh, himachal pradesh also i have collected and these mushrooms are uh, our indigenous culture are very fast growing and even you can use weeds uh, for growing this strain this my culture were uh, from mizoram you can see there on weeds uh, this mushroom is coming next one uh, this oyster mushroom this is also very popular mushroom next one we call it yeah this oyster mushroom if you go in the forest you can see on the trees a wooden bar you can see this type of this oyster mushroom next one this mushroom has got the largest cultivated species you can get all the different colors yellow color pink color blue color this mushroom of 10 gram and mushroom weighing about 200 100 gram to 500 gram king of the oyster mushroom one sim, single fruit body will grow will be about 250 to 500 gram in brown sand i will show the slide next one yeah these are the different subset please hurry wheat sa padish sa next uh, i was passing from an anand to ahmedabad and you can see on the road side how much banana waste is lying and this type of waste disposal they are creating a lot of problem accident and our health problem because whenever this organic mass is rotting they will give a lot of bad smell so this type of waste are available and that can be used for growing mushroom next one yeah this is from 
Panchamahal area. You can see paddies are lying on the roadside. Nobody is there. So these waste we can use and very good. This organ, this organic type of very fresh. This paddy set available. Next one. <coughs> this soybean waste. Next one. This poplar leaves. I have used this poplar leaves. It is not having any economical value. And one and under any poplar tree in within six hours you can collect 10 to 20 full bags of big uh, this uh, poplar dried leaves during november december and this type of poplar leaves you can use for growing this mushroom it's not only poplar even mango leaves and so many uh, tree leaves even people leaves i have used for growing mushroom next one these wooden shavings next one this coconut waste, I, I was mentioning about you. These are the inflows and reckies and all this part. Next one. You can see how beautifully on coconut reckies, how much mushroom is coming. This is a pink color mushroom. This is one of the fastest growing oyster mushroom. And within 10 days, it will start giving mushroom fruit bodies. Next one. The pine needles. Some people say that pine needle, it is where whenever we were used to give training. People used to come and ask whether we can use pine needles for growing the mushroom. As you know, these pine needles, they are having a lignin, that, that they are having these tannins, and they are having antifungal property, and very less nitrogen available. And with the help of soybean meal, I have included 10% of soybean meal. And you can see in pine needles, which are having very less value, and these pine needles, they are causing a lot of problems in forest fire, especially in Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Kashmir. So these pine needles can be used to grow the mushroom. Next one. Yeah, this is a palm tree. You can see on palm tree, this uh, fibrous leaf and material, aerial roots. You can see this mushroom was growing. Next one. Now, there are different methods for the growing oyster mushroom. Almost I'm taking five minutes more. I will hurriedly. There are different methods, cold water, hot water soaking, 60 to 64 degrees centigrade for an hour, one hour. Then partial composting, just like as a button mushroom, you can have one pile can be prepared. And for six days, you do composting. And after six days, you can use that material for growing mushroom. Next one. Yeah, this, this hot water soaking. Next one. After soak. That this soaking hot water, you spray so that it is cooled down, and this track can be used for uh, spawning. Next one, yeah, and the, 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 this type of tub also you can uh, use for uh, hot water because the hot water is temperature only 60 65 degrees, it has not to be boiled. Some people think hot water that means we have to boil this trap, only the temperature should be about 65 degrees centigrade. Next one. Yeah, same same thing. Next one. Uh, yeah, next. This is repeat. Sorry. Next one. Spawning. This spawning means adding of spawn in substrate that is known as spawning. How much spawn? Ten percent of the dry substrate. Suppose you have taken ten kg of dry substrate. So dry substrate one kg of spawn is required. Or 2.5%. If you don't remember how much dry substrate is there, to, on the wet, wet, 2.5% of wet substrate weight, spawning can be done in layer or thorough spawning. Thorough spawning in entire substrate you are mixing. There are some people, especially in Northeast and Bengal and Assam, Odisha, the people they mix spawn only in the margin area and on the top portion. They think that the grain should be on the top. So from the grain, these mushrooms are coming. So mushrooms not come, they are not coming from the grain. This grain helps as a carrier material. So we have to mix this grain in the entire substrate. Next one. Yeah, you can see very beautiful slide. These are the grain, this spawn, and we are mixing in the straw. Next one. This is layer spawning. You can see this is a polythene bag. This is one layer of spawn, then a, a substrate. Another layer of mushroom seed, like that, two, three layers you can make. You can fold this bag. Next one. You can fold like this. Next one. You can, yeah. Now in incubation room, you can keep this bag and you can see one, two, three, four, five, up to six, seven layer. And this is a very 
low cost technology we have developed these are nylon uh, uh, ropes and here what we have done a tripod like structure had you can see here so very low cost this method and here you are keeping this bag hanging bag method but in hanging bag what happened sometimes the bags are to, uh, when you remove this trial um, broken that's why this method is better next one yeah we have tried because there were earlier some people used to ask me and that polythene will be banned so what to do so i have attempted to grow this mushroom in plastic trays also and you can see this is a plastic tree an equal amount of mushroom i have harvested from this plastic trays also so this plastic trays only the upper portion is to be open next one yeah in the plastic bag once you have added spawn you will get the whitish complete growth on the bag that means now your bags are ready for fruiting next now you open the bag you can have this type of hanging method also <laughs> next one yeah for fruit body induction there are three things required uh, carbon dioxide light this mushroom require light if you don't provide light six to eight hours about light is required and the carbon dioxide concentrate fresh air to be introduced so that the oxygen concentration is uh, the carbon dioxide concentration is about 600 to 800 or maximum 900 if the car uh, carbon dioxide concentration is very high you will get mushrooms having very long stem and your cape will be very small they will be abnormal type of mushroom and if you sell that mushroom you will not be able to sell next one yeah this crop manager i have already discussed you next one you can see i have tried different method here only two portion is a, in summer what happens when the temperature is 35 or 40 degrees centigrade to maintain relative humidity it is a very big problem so what we have done only the top portion exposed and small slits with the help of blades we are creating so mushrooms are coming here so that whenever you spray water so water remains inside the bags next one so this is a beautiful yellowish color mushroom this is our white strain next one yeah this is a blue oyster mushroom in the initial stage you can see there's a bluish color mushroom and this is king oyster king oyster mushroom brownish structure this is a brown stain there is another white stain also next one yeah this is yellow mushroom yellow oyster mushroom you can see this is a very beautiful yellow oyster mushroom this is a complete brown mushroom oyster mushroom next one yeah this is also wild stain you can see how many numbers of mushrooms are coming in first stage. in the oyster mushroom the advantage is that in the first crop itself 50 to 60 percent of produce you will get in first flash itself remaining the 30 or 40 percent that will you will get in next 20 or 25 days next one yeah this is also in tree you can see the single fruit bodies are coming brown stain next one this is a pink oyster mushroom next one yeah this is a king oyster mushroom you can, i have shown you brown stain this is a white stain and here you can see this mushroom i have cultivated in 1987 almost 25 30 years back and indigenous fruit body will weigh uh, 300 to 400 gram even up to 500 gram next one you can see the big size of this mushroom that's why it is known as king oyster mushroom and china is producing a big quantity of this mushroom they are exporting to europe next one yeah how to plug the mushroom you can see this is just uh, uh, harvesting of those mushroom next one this mushroom can be dried and dried oyster mushroom you can see in polypropylene bag and whenever you want you can use you can make powder from this or whenever you want to use this mushroom you just soak in hot water for half an hour one hour and you can prepare different types of vegetables or pakoda or all this type of different recipes next one now just i will take five minutes only next one is auricularia jelly mushroom next one this mushroom is known as wood ear mushroom black ear earlier people used to call juice ear mushroom because the juice has very big ear but now we don't call juice ear only we call wood ear or black ear mushroom there are eight species i have collected about eight species of this mushroom 
from Himachal Solon itself and one more species, Auricularia. Uh, um, uh, uh, recently, we have um, it is having. Uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the name. That is also very interesting species. Nine species we have collected from India. Next one. Yeah, you can see this mushroom coming from the bags. Next. These bags have to be had. Otherwise, what happens if they are kept on the surface because of moisture, water content, they will be rotting. Next one. The advantage of auricular mushroom, the, uh, the keeping quality of this mushroom is very high. Whenever you want, you spray the water, the fruit body will be no normal. And the, the temperature requirement is very flexible. It can be grown from 25 to 30 degrees, 35 degrees centigrade. And it is having medicinal property and the people suffering from stomach problem, piles, ulcer, this mushroom is having very good for the stomach problems. Next one. Another very interesting mushroom that I will take only this mushroom, this milky mushroom, as the name indi indicate, this white button mushroom, this white color and Calosab indica scientific name. It can be grown on different types of straw, paddy straw, wheat, ragi, maize, jar, cotton straw, leaves, sugarcane, bagat, all kind of different agriculture ways you can use this mushroom. Next one. Hot water, steam pulsation, sp uh, spawning. He, in this mushroom, the spawn rate is almost double the the oyster mushroom. In oyster mushroom, 2.5% of the wet straw we spawn we are using. But in this mushroom, 4 to 5% of wet straw is used for, after the spawning. The bats are kept at 25 to 35 degrees centigrade or up to 35 degrees centigrade uh, or even sometimes 40 degrees centigrade it can grow. Next one. When you can see whole bag is colonized with mycelium, then we'll cut into two equal halves and expose portion with the help of, uh, we will cover with the help of casing soil and the mushrooms will start coming up. Next one. Yeah, casing soil is provided. Next one. You can see how beautifully these mushrooms are coming. This is very good mushroom. Next one. Uh, just like as Calosabi indica, this is another very interesting, I have mentioned you. I collected this mushroom from South Rajasthan, and this is known as Macrosabi gigantia. And this mushroom looks similar to button mushroom. In the young stage, if you sell in the market, nobody will be, until less some scientists, nobody will be able to differentiate that this is a button mushroom or Macrosabi or this is not a button mushroom. It is cultivated in four or five years. We have grown a lot of this mushroom in polythene bags also and trees also. It is having very good keep keeping quality and vitamin D. Next one. This Padisha mushroom, this is also very interesting mushroom. On Padisha, Urisa, uh, the people are growing. A lot of this mushroom in West Bengal also. Next. This Padisha bundle, they are prepared. Next. I will, next. With the help of slide, I will show you how the. Yeah, you can see this Padisha bundles, the open portions, they are cut. You can see. The open portion, terminal portions, they are cut here, and these bundles are prepared. Now the next one, the bundles are kept here, and this wheat, this gram powder and spawn is provided. You can see here one or two layers, one, two, three, four, four layers, and then it is covered with the help of polythene shed. Next one, yeah, polythene shed, and within seven days, mycelium colonization will be there, and you will open the bag. And mushrooms will have start coming up. Next one. You can see these are the pinhead. This is also very, very tasty mushroom. But the only disadvantage of this mushroom, it is having a very poor keeping quality. You cannot store this mushroom in your refrigerator. If you keep at 4 degrees centigrade, within 4-6 hours, there will be autolysis. And your mushroom will be completely turned into water. Next, I think finish. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. If you have any question. Um, thank you, Dr. Upad. I hope you can hear us. Yes, I can hear. Okay. I think that was a very wonderful authoritative uh, 
presentation on uh, mushroom cultivation, uh, especially for the uh, for the benefit of uh, you know beginners in mycology. Um, I have one uh, question to ask you. You know, as I understand, China is the largest producer of mushrooms in the world. I think they produce about uh, seventy percent of the world mushrooms, and India is there at two three percent, I believe. <laughs> I uh, so how what what could be the reasons behind this kind of you know data you know why India is doing only two percent and China is producing seventy percent? What are your views on that, Doctor Padhya? Sir, you're muted, sir. Sir, I can't hear you. Sir, so, can't hear you, sir. Sir, so wait, sir, wait, Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Now, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, troubleshooting there. <laughs> we face some technical issues. Uh, I, I was asking you, sir. I mean, uh, India is uh, China is producing around seventy percent of the world's of mushrooms, and uh, in contrast, India is only contributing only two percent. So I was wondering what could be the reasons and what are your views on this actually? As you know, the biggest reason is that mushrooms are not very popular in our India. So many societies, even the Jain, Lo, Gujaratis, or Rajasthanis, or Marwaris, they don't consume this mushroom. They think it is having people have notion that it is a non-vegetarian thing. That's why the people don't consume. Moreover, the cost of electricity is very high in our country. The third thing, government support.
for their market because it is a perishable, perishable crop. And we don't have very uh, post harvesting facilities like canning, pickle making, or different types of just like as a millet. We don't have different type produce, in, especially in Bihar. You can see that people are making mushroom papad, mushroom biscuit. Like that, if we have this type of infrastructure facilities, then the people will get very good market and their crop will not be lost. That is the reason that we, the farmers are not getting much support. Thank you for that, sir. I will now let the audience ask you some questions. Uh, let me just unmute them. Um, Professor Bhatt, do, do you have any questions? Professor Bhatt, if you are there. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, both of you. And Dr. Fadhya, I'm very happy to see you after a long time. Uh, we have been together for you know for about ten years in a project along with the Imtech. So, sir, thank you, sir. It's a wonderful presentation you did, and uh, I'm very happy to. Although you said it is for the beginners, it's for everyone. You know, so many issues, especially the casing is very important uh, in uh, mushroom cultivation. You explained it so well. So thanks very much. And also uh, the variety of mushrooms is truly a treat for us today evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for those kind words. Mr. Irfan, do you have Hello. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, hello, sir. How are you? Uh, Fine. This is this is me, Irfanullah. I'm a PhD student here in Germany. Uh, just arrived a week before ago, and uh, um, it is it was a really a wonderful session, and uh, uh, we uh, I learned a lot from this session, and I really appreciate the efforts you put in. So it was really a fruitful session for us. Thank you so much for all these. I was also in Germany. Oh, that's great. I'm a Dutch fellow, and for oh, almost great. five years, I was in Germany. Oh, great, great. Uh, uh, basically, I'm from Pakistan. I just arrived uh, a week before. Uh, yeah, ago. I was in Sitau, Chemnitz, and uh, Jena. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we uh, 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 And also, we have lots of. Uh, Indian students here in our uh, in our lab laboratory. They are also working on mushrooms. Yeah, similarly, we are, I am also working on mushrooms. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Sumita, Doctor Sumita, please. Thank you. Sir, I have a question. Yeah, please do. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, the session was really good, and uh, some of the mushrooms uh, we have I've not come across at all. It was really an overview, and I've not seen many of the mushrooms. So it was really an overview, a good overview, and we had a glimpse of seeing the mushrooms also, which we have not seen before. Sir, I have a doubt. As you have said, like different substrates are used for growing the mushrooms, right, sir? So yeah. will the flavor of the mushrooms vary accordingly? Because you, as you some of the mushrooms you said. You can grow it on the co by using coconut as a substrate. So based yeah. on that, will the nutrition content and their taste also varies based on that? Yeah, if the substance is having higher nitrogen percentage, then you will get fruiting bodies more fru fruit body formation and not only more production, even their protein nitrogen content is also more in mushroom fruit bodies directly. I have found that little bit more nitrogen in the mushroom fruit body. If the substrate is poor in nitrogen, the protein content will be very less. So which substrate is good, sir, essentially? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, it is always better to mix. Uh, I am an authority in oyster mushroom, and I have tried so many different substrates. That oyster mushroom, it is one of the most easy mushroom, even if you mix two different two or three different types of uh, substrate material, it will give added advantages. Just like the paddy straw, it will absorb very less moisture. And no, if you mix wheat and paddy straw, it will be a better substrate. Similarly, in wheat straw, if you add any kind of 
proteinaceous material like pulse straw or oil seed straw they will give extra nitrogen and the crop will crop duration be, will be very long duration and the mushroom will be very healthy looking and very th thick and flashy okay sir sir and uh, another thing is uh, now many are interested in isolating phytochemicals from the mushrooms right sir sorry sorry isolating phytochemicals from the mushrooms yeah yeah so so many chemicals even so, I, I have found that dr bhatt was with me in our csr project from almost 30 mushrooms i have found 23 different types of medicinal property anti tumor immunomodulatory even anti ulcer from one of the mushroom as you know ulcer it has been caused by this bacteria uh, yes, uh, and it survives a very high acidic ph and yes. this mushroom it was not only only restricting the growth of this bacteria but it was killing that bacteria that was the biggest point that it, it can kill the the to basic form yeah okay sir so, the, so, so many from even one mushroom species you can find two three different very less uh, biochemical or this type of work has been done on uh, mushroom so a lot of potential for mushroom research or biotechnology on medicinal property on nutrient properties sir uh, uh, is it necessary that to say example if you want to over express certain phytochemical so do you alter the media composition and the uh, what to say the incubation condition for these temperatures so that you over express certain phytochemicals so that in a shorter span you get a, a longer yield a good yield is it like that sir because of echo i am a little bit not able to understand no sir the question is the for, for example certain phytochemicals you know if you want to over express it so yeah. do you modify the media and also the conditions for it so that in a shorter span of time you are able to increase the yield of the phytochemicals playing around with the media and in the temperature yeah this phytochemicals or metabolites they are secondary metabolite when once in active stage active mycelial stage you will get very less uh, secondary metabolite but oh, after 15 or 20 days when the growth is almost complete you will get more and more bioactive molecules or phytochemicals uh, sir last question so do you add any electors to induce uh, expression of the phytochemicals sir no we don't uh, indu uh, add any ch chemicals but uh, some people have tried to induce uh, earlier fruiting or more production by inducing some growth hormones just like gibralic acid and iia and iba or like that so that gives but you have to standardize the concentration okay sir. thank you sir welcome thank you uh, uh, i request the audience to just limit to one or two questions and if you have uh, hello sir can you please stop? hello sir no you cannot ask out of the turn i will allow only the people in the queue thank you um, I was just telling, uh, please limit to one or two questions, uh, because if you have uh, some time at the end, we can accommodate more questions from the same people. Now, Dr. Ram Prakash. Uh, thank you, sir, for your presentation. It was very useful. I just want to ask uh, one quick question here. Uh, it's regarding reusability of the substrate. So is it possible that we can reuse the substrate which we have already used earlier? Yeah, very good question. Uh, people in China, they have attempted uh, the material utilized by one mushroom for growing another species. A little bit pH, because once this fungus mycelium grows, then what happens? The pH comes to acidic pH. So you have to little bit modify your pH, this pH and put extra nitrogen. And one time or two times, you can use that only one i think i will suggest only one time because then it will not be economical you can use uh, two or three times also but the production whatever you will get it will be very very less okay okay sir thank you very much sir welcome thank you deeper god please uh, uh, uh sir my question is uh, you know a lot of mushroom growers here in southern part of india 
they grow mushrooms uh, throughout the rainy season and winter uh, rainy season and uh, winter season and then when again the summer is here uh, you know they have trouble cultivating mushrooms so all the marketing that they've done during that time goes to waste and they have to restart again once the rain starts so my question is are there any simple methods that they can use to bring down the temperature by maybe 2 or 3 degrees like uh, you know foggers misters or uh, whatever yeah. and among them which is the best method to uh, bring down the temperature by that amount like 2 to 3 degrees yeah very good question uh first thing that whatever the growing house we are preparing i have seen that i, I was in near in jaipur and i have visited one place sikar there are one mushroom farmer he has prepared mushroom growing house using double brick layer and between two walls he has put little bit of sand he has not plastered and then he was in the early morning uh, there was he was having some little bit holes in the bricks and he used to put water on the the sand and when the temperature was about 40 or 45 degrees centigrade inside his cropping house i have found temperature of 28 degree centigrade so this is one method another method is cooling pad or with the help of air cooler 6 to 7 degree centigrade temperature you can cool down with the help of air cooler but in the air cooler the uh, this flow of or the speed of the air it should not be very high there should not be direct air otherwise if the direct air is on the back the the whatever the bags in the in the front they will be having a damage so you can have little bit of some this cotton sheets so that this uh, this air goes first of all on the sh sheets and then it is uh, inside the cropping rooms so air cooler and moreover this uh, method of growing houses okay thank you sir thank you very much sutapa gupta please Afifa, please. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. I have a hello. I have a question related to uh, post harvesting yeah. mechanism. Oh. How can I increase the um is sh uh, shelf life by uh, uh how can I increase the shelf life or what are the best best methods for storing harvested mushrooms? Yeah. Uh, for different mushroom. you have to use different method first of all in button mushroom what the people do if they because it is a living thing once you remove the mushroom from the bag and immediately if you put in their this pollen bags or panet what will happen there will be condensation of the moisture and because of the condensation this this mushroom will be spoiled so just after harvesting you keep at 4 degree centigrade for 4 to 6 hour so that whatever the extra moisture is there it it will go out and then you put inside the in the pollen bag or polish the pollen sheet other mushrooms just like as a oyster mushroom auricularia callosibe framulina you can easily dry this mushroom with the button mushroom you can uh, this uh, there are other methods for this drying this uh, low temperature cooling drying is also their method but these methods are very costly and not affordable for each and every person that's all right sir thank you so much shital chaudhary please dr yan suresh please dr ram prakash please Ah, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I would like to thank to add as uh, Michael Asia family, sir. Michael Asia family. So I have one question. So around the world, so many vegetable markets. So they are uh, discarding the waste, uh, waste of vegetables. So can we use that vegetables as a uh, uh, medium for uh, mushroom cultivation? yeah certainly you can use but this vegetable waste first of all it has to be dried because when there is a chlorophyll this fungus mycelium will not grow first of all you dry in the open sun for 5 6 days just like the banana leaves banana pseudo stem you dry you make it into small pieces and when it is completely dried 
you can use the vegetable uh, material uh, just like I have used with leaves also. So vegetable material, material it is an organic reed and it is having yes, cellulose sir. and hemicellulose, all these things okay, so you can use. Okay, sir. Okay, so that is a, that is a main problem to in the every market. Eh? So that's why I yeah. asked that question. <laughs> But so in government, in all the government also, this is difficult to discard that vegetables, waste waste of the vegetables also. So that's why mm -hmm. I have to do that also. So that's why I ask that questions. Thank you, sir, for your solving that my questions. Welcome. Sutapa Gupta, please. Good evening, sir. Uh, so it's a very wonderful lecture today that you have shared for a mushroom cultivation uh, for the beginner, sir. I have one question. Is uh, Ganoderma, which is a very uh, important medicinal mushroom, can be uh, cultivated? It is cultivated, but what kind of uh, substrate can be used? And uh, is it possible to cultivate? I am from West Bengal, uh, Kolkata. It is possible uh, to cultivate Ganoderma in Eastern India, particularly in Kolkata, uh, West Bengal region? Yeah. Ganoderma, this is a very good mushroom and it is very suitable for uh, the coastal areas because all mushrooms require very uh, high humidity and the temperature of your coastal, this Calcutta, West Bengal, Odisha, even Chennai or Madras, all this area, the temperature is always more than 28 degrees, 30 degrees centigrade. So you can easily grow this uh, Ganoderma mushroom or Rishi mushroom. But the only thing for growing Ganoderma, because I have not covered there are so many, uh, almost I have 20, 25 different mushrooms I have cultivated. So all mushroom, I cannot explain in one over. So the only five, six mushrooms I have covered. In, in fact, I wanted to uh, start the give lecture on Ganoderma also, but time was a limiting factor. So Ganoderma you can use on sawdust or even we, we have tried to cultivate on uh, wheat also. So you can attempt sardus or mixture of sardus plus wheat stuff both will be more better than alone sardus or wheat stuff okay thank you very much sir uh, dr sunil shivastav please uh, yeah thank you uh, for this wonderful lecture uh, professor padhya nice listening to you i have two queries like shiitake mushroom which is very good and has a lot of constraints as far as the growing conditions are concerned. I believe we have to, uh, because it naturally grows on oak, oak trees, yeah, in Japan and other places. Uh, so in India, what substrate are we using? Because you said uh, there are two substrates that you mentioned, Mori et al. and Roissy et al. Uh, but there is no uh, oat, uh, oak as such, right? So is it essential to have an oak uh, powder or something? And uh, can you just tell us what, how e easy or difficult it is to grow in our daily conditions? And my second question is regarding the cordyceps. Uh, what is the progress on the cordyceps uh, growth conditions? Yeah, first of all, I will uh, explain your uh, answer your first question. Uh, not only Japan, Japan, China, even from Arunachal Pradesh, I have collected this lentanula shududus edudus from very far interior area. It was a very remote area. And mm -hmm. I have collected this lentanula edudus and this dermoplast culture. It has been deposited in the gene bank of DMR. I have uh, made a gene bank. About 3,000 different types of cultures uh, mm -hmm. are deposited in the gene bank of DMR. So uh, not only the, in India. And there are chances from Nagaland and Mizoram also we can mm -hmm. get wild a shiitake mushroom but uh, it's sometimes it's very difficult to go interior and dense forest uh, without the help of local people but from Arunachal Pradesh I have collected this mushroom. So, Second, if you want to cultivate in the labs uh, how yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah this is lentil any kind of sardus, mango sardus popular sardus uh, so many different even kicker sardus you can grow this uh, Except pine, even pine sardust, even you, if you want to use it, you have to soak in water and little bit squeeze so that do whatever tannins or phenolics are there, they are removed. And then by adding, uh, I have mentioned you two different uh, this methods. One had a, one has used rice bran and wheat bran, and uh, this nitrogen supplement you can mix and this sardust, and you can we can easily we are growing 
in uh, DMR, I have grown so many uh, cultures of this uh, shiitake mushroom. You can easily grow. But the only thing is for shiitake, the temperature should be less than 20, 22 degrees centigrade. Even now, we have found some strain which are growing more than 20 or 25 degrees centigrade. So you need that type of strain which grows higher temperature requiring. Even Japan, they have three different types of strain. One which grows less than 50 degrees centigrade, 15 degrees centigrade, another 15 to 20 degrees centigrade, and third strain, they grow more than 20 to 25 or 26 degrees centigrade. Okay. So like that, you can, by manipulating the temperature, India, it's very easy to grow the shiitake mushroom, not very impossible. And regarding the cordyceps? Yeah, cordyceps, so many people are growing this mushroom and it is having medicinal property. Uh, yesterday, I have received one uh, letter from one of my friend, Mr. Rohit Agarwal. He's from, uh, uh, he's from Delhi, near, near Delhi. I think he's from Gurgaon, Noida. And he, he has published one paper, anti-cancer properties from cordyceps. So cordyceps also, the technology is there. If you want to grow, you can easily grow cordyceps mushroom. But the technology, it is altogether different from other mushroom. It is a lab, just like as a span preparation. You have to develop a laboratory for growing this cordyceps. The temperature requirement, light requirement, <coughs> and manipulation should be there in your laboratory. Okay, sir. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you Dr. Srivastava. Akshay Satavara, Tatwara. Tatsho Sangha, Chita Jodri. Yes, uh, hello, sir. It was a very wonderful lecture. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yeah. Are. Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, actually, I'm trying to grow Ganoderma in lamb. Actually, I'm trying to isolate the Ganoderma and uh, I'm trying to cultivate it on the Petri plate. But uh, uh, somehow I, uh, I'm, I don't know for why, what reasons I'm not getting it. Uh, I'm not getting the culture on PDA. So can you suggest any medium for uh, isolating the culture? Uh, but the only problem is, as you know, Ganoderma. It is a very hardy structure, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe that Ganorma derma you have collected from the nature. In nature, there are so many saprophytic molds, fungi, mm -hmm. bacteria. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. on the surface of this Ganoderma, and if you isolate, you will get this contamination. So that is the biggest problem. P Ganoderma you can easily culture on PTA, but mm -hmm. the only thing the this isolation, tissue isolation, it should be a little bit soft. You soak your the hard tissue of Ganoderma in sterile water for one to two hours. And then you take from the deeper portion of the tissue for isolation. You can take ten, five to ten bits on a petty dish. And I think I'm sure that you get one or two uh, this mycelial culture from these bits. Uh, sir, I have tried surface sterilization with 70% alcohol. Uh, yeah. But still, I'm unable to uh, unable to get the culture. Even not even the contaminants are growing. Uh, I'm I've tried many uh, lowering down the alcohol uh, concentration also, but uh, somehow oh. I'm not getting success. So no, you suggest on that. Uh, maybe reason is that uh, yeah, because of high alcohol percentage or con concentration. Your the mm. tissue, it is completely exosmosis or it is completely dried or dead. And that's why you are not getting the culture. But uh, uh, just surface sterilize and then immediately soak in sterile water. Or even uh, normally water for isolation, we are using mercury chloride concentration. It should be half whatever concentration you are using for other uh, so, um, this organism from the uh, pathogen, it should be less than half of the concentration of mercury chloride. Even the bleaching powder also you can use. For soaking and that, one minute, and then immediately keep in sterile water for minimum half an hour, so that whatever mercury ions they are on the surface, they are completely mm -hmm. dissolved after one or two hours. Then you take sterile filter paper, and this 
bit whatever you have soaked in sterile water just dry it and then uh, transfer tissue i think it will it will be able to succeed in getting the uh, tissue culture okay okay fine thank you sir maybe i have nothing to do with the uh, isolation yeah maybe <laughs> okay we'll see sir thank you thank you for your suggestions uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I cannot take uh, more than one question. No? Uh, from the last question from Mr. Akshay, if you are around, otherwise uh, Deepak Gorda will ask. Uh, Hello, good evening, sir. Uh, good my evening. question is, are there, are there any novel extraction method for, or technology available to uh, yeah. extraction for, uh, uh, extraction for uh, medicinal compound from edible mushrooms? You can try different methods, hot water soaking, uh, this alcohol extraction, uh, and then acetonitrile. These are the different solvents. And uh, uh, you can get uh, some some things in hot water also, some uh, metabolites in alcohol extraction, so different ty types of solvents. And then you run spectrophotometer. And different peaks you can find that in this extract, I have found these four or five peaks. And then with the help of HVLC, you can isolate those metabolites and screen and GCMS. And there are so many very good methods. And you can find out the new metabolites. OK, OK, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to you know, wind up this uh, question and answer session uh, due to the paucity of time. Uh, but uh, Dr. Asi Upadhyay is available on his email. Please feel free to email him. And he's also available on uh, Microasia Fungi ID WhatsApp group. Uh, with this, uh, we are coming to the end of the program uh, with uh, Dr. R.C. Upadhyay Sarji. Thank you very much uh, for spending uh, your Welcome, sir. Thank you. Sunday afternoon and evening with us. And, uh, this is one of the best uh, presentations I listened to on uh, mushroom cultivation. I think it is uh, probably attributed to the kind of experiences you have got for the last 30, 40 years probably. The, and you are digested, digested the whole matter and uh, all complexity you are boiled down into simple uh, in presentation. I think, uh, I, I believe this presentation has been wonderful and very helpful to the beginners. Probably some experienced people might have obtained interesting insights about mushroom cultivation. Uh, I'm so glad that you have spent your time with us. You have shared your knowledge with us. Uh, this will be a wonderful. Uh, this has been a wonderful uh, opportunity for all of us. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, with Thanks. this, I will let you go, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have come to the end of the program. Uh, I will share the feedback form in the in the chat box. If you are interested in getting a certificate of participation, please submit the form. And if you still have some questions, please email it to me. I will forward it to Dr. Upadhyaya. Uh, because uh, you have been talking for, Dr. Upadhyaya has been talking for almost two, two hours now. I think it is uh, very fair that I will let him go now. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I'll share the you know feedback form in the chat box. Please fill the feedback form in 10-15 minutes. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for joining in today and spending your Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning or Sunday maybe Saturday night with us. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah.